My name is Dean Heidemann. My report is on post-traumatic stress disorder and chronic pain patients. In the past decade, a considerable amount of research has described a negative synergistic effect of PTSD on chronic pain patients and vice versa. Several models have been created to describe how one disease process affects the other, and I will go over those later on in the report. These two conditions are more prevalent together than previously thought. Unfortunately, in clinical practice, they are often underdiagnosed and hard to treat, especially if not caught. PTSD has several types of symptoms. The re-experiencing symptoms is the traditional flashbacks, avoidance of triggers, and arousal symptoms such as nervousness that patients present with. This condition is more prevalent in the female population and surprisingly is fairly prevalent as a whole. Chronic pain patients are about five times more likely to present with PTSD and as to be expected, military personnel present with quite a significant factor as well. The risk factors for PTSD, the female gender, would be due to a lot of sexual abuse that has a horrible effect on their psyche. I found it interesting that man-made traumatic events have more PTSD associated with them than natural disasters do. As far as um, chronic pain and PTSD combined, they have a negative reinforcement effect on each other, causing worsening of the symptoms. Each um, one is harder to treat because of the other one, and it's thought that there is a maintenance process. The influence of PTSD on chronic pain leads to an increase in pain for those patients, as well as increase in uh, disability, increase in psychological issues such as depression and affective disorders. PTSD and chronic pain have several similar characteristics such as behavioral avoidance. PTSD will avoid any kind of a trigger and chronic pain patients will avoid any um, activities that will hurt them. And maladaptive thought uh, patterns such as depression and anxiety issues like that. There is a poor treatment prognosis, especially if these are not caught early. And unfortunately, because they are not diagnosed together, it makes treatment quite a bit uh, um, more difficult. PTSD patients often have been um, attributed to having use of opioid, or opioid medications. The mechanisms by which these uh, synergistic effects occur is not necessarily completely understood, although several models have been uh, described to help with treatment modalities later on in uh, the process. The mutual maintenance model, basically one uh, disease process maintains the other one as well, such as flashbacks or memories can provoke mu muscle tension, which worsens the chronic pain, or you have pain sensations that trigger uh, flashbacks of a horrific event of PTSD. The shared vulnerability model, Certain individuals have factors that just make them vulnerable to certain conditions that lead to PTSD. These um, events can be traumatic and painful, is more likely to lead to the PTSD as well. The perpetual avoidance model is very interesting, and there are two components, the PTSD circle and the pain circle that I will go over. These show how each uh, certain characteristics can feed off of each other to maintain each of these syndromes. Um, the PTSD circle, trauma causes dysfunctional cognitive pr processing, which leads to hyperarousal. The hyperarousal leads to inactivity, which then causes further uh, dysfunctional cognition, so it's a continuous circle. The hyperarousal can also lead to increased pain sensations, which then leads to the pain circle. The pain sensations lead to the uh, catastrophizing. Uh, pain sensations can also lead to inactivity. The uh, catastrophizing, catastroph I can't even pronounce it, progresses into inactivity, which worsens 
activity and the depression. There is thought to be an associative learning pattern with chronic pain as well as PTSD. Um, PTSD is becoming known as not just a stress and anxiety problem, but also as a, a learning disorder. So these might have some treatment modalities we can uh, further expand because of the learning process. Relaxation techniques, biofeedback and exposure are some ways of helping with PTSD as well as the chronic pain uh, for these patients. Obviously nothing is going to be 100% foolproof, but these have been shown to be very effective. For the healthcare provider, screening for PTSD in chronic pain patients is quite important. It's said that PTSD, um, 50 to 75% of people with PTSD have chronic pain. So this is something we need to evaluate as healthcare providers in the future.